This program is proudly brought to you by Bianco Building Supplies, helping to build South Australian football. Here we go. Good evening everyone, I'm Nat Adamopoulos and this is Full On Football, the only local TV show that promotes local South Australian football. Well, thanks for joining us and as you know, each and every week we sort of try and get a theme for each show and this week we're looking at coaches and coaching development and uh, with us tonight, I'm very, very proud to have uh, two of our top coaches, basically they've got the best of the best under their coaching prowess here in South Australia. Two men who over the last 20 years or so have been part of historical moments in South Australian football and still are to this day, they're still creating history. Um, from the Adelaide United Football Club, coach of the senior A-League team, Aurelio Vidmar, and coach of the youth league team, Joe Mullen. Welcome back to Full On Football to both of you. G'day now, how are you? Yeah, good thanks. Now look, it's first of all, I just have to say hearty congratulations to both of you. Uh, in separate ways, first of all, Joe, to you for landing the uh, position of the coach of the youth league team. Yeah, it's a terrific opportunity for us um, as a coach and also a terrific opportunity for the players net to, uh, to be involved in an environment which is um, going to be as professional as we can be for part-time players almost. Mm, definitely. And Aurelio, to you, first of all, congratulations on what was a, a bit of a topsy-turvy season for you, but you've come out on top getting the Adelaide United, the first Australian team, to the quarterfinals of the Asian Champions League. Yeah, it was great. You're right, we had a bit of a, a topsy-turvy back end to the season, uh, but uh, we fixed up a, a fair few problems in that period, and uh, the players thoroughly deserve that uh, qualifying for the quarterfinals. They, they worked extremely hard through that period, and, um, and as uh, Joey and John to my left there knows that... Uh, the amount of work that you put in, if you do it correctly, that uh, the rewards will always come. Well, no man has put in more work, more work than you, and actually being recognised now because recently we found out that you've been inducted into the South Australian Football Hall of Fame for this year. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know uh, I'd been retired that long. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Raz De Carlo popped into the office a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I thought there was something strange going on when uh, a few of the other staff members walked into the boardroom and I thought what was going on here and uh, and then he uh, presented me with the award so it was a, a, a big shock first of all and uh, and obviously a, um, a massive honour. Well it is a massive honour and it's a magnificent, I mean going through some of the stats of both of you, you're just incredible with what you've done, I mean yourself really are 294 NSL games, 267 of those with Adelaide City, 52 goals. You were uh, NSL Player of the Year 2001 and Golden Boot Award. Top goal scorer when you were in Belgium with Standard Liege in 94-95. 95 Oceania Player of the Year. Um, 53 games for Australia for 18 goals. Seven of those games as a captain. I mean, that must have been a great honour for you. Yeah, it was. Um, obviously representing your country, that was the... Um probably the highlight of, uh, of your football career. Obviously there, there were other highlights, but um, uh, the first thing when uh, the national team um, started calling, it don't, didn't matter what situation you were in at club level, um, I always said I was going to go and play for the national team. And as we see today, there are always country versus club issues, and I think they'll still stay there for a, a very long time. But I just was a little bit different, I suppose, from, from the rest. and. Um, decided every time they called I was going to come, it didn't matter what um, situation I was in at the club. Um, I did pay for that. As I returned, I found myself in the reserves on, on a number of occasions, but uh, believed in myself, continued to work, and within weeks, three weeks, I was back into the first team anyway, so that was the, the punt that I took, but I was always very rapt to represent the country. Now, you've also represented the country in three, three World Cup campaigns, also the Confederations Cup in 97-2001 and the Olympic Games in Atlanta in 96. Inaugural captain of Adelaide United, another historical moment, which when we speak with guys from that team, it was absolute euphoria when that happened. 
then went on to be assistant coach and really without much of a coaching career you've landed this job you and as I said you're a very determined person you set yourself a goal and you head straight for that goal I mean this is fantastic for you to be able to do this yeah I thought I think it's just a progression really you know 15 years ago as you were playing you didn't you know well may even you can go back to 20 years ago when you first started you didn't think you're going to represent the country you didn't think you're going to play state representative football you didn't think you were going to play in the World Cup qualifier, you didn't know all these things, it's just something that evolves um, and I loved the game when I was playing obviously, uh, I didn't know I wanted to be a professional until a certain point and then really did everything possible to get a professional contract, so it's just, you're going through stages and you're just growing, you know, you grow every day, every week, every year and, uh, and all those awards accolades, and yes. accolades that you just mentioned, they're just part of the progression of uh, an everyday footballer. You know, after I retired three years ago, I said, yes, I'd like to get into coaching. It probably came a little bit quicker than I thought, but the opportunity was there, and I would have been mad not to take it. Now, I have to ask you, like I do ask everyone, that moment, the inaugural Adelaide United football squad, hmm. how was that for you, playing in front of packed houses? I, I said earlier, um, you know, a lot of uh, awards and achievements come, come by and a lot of uh, great games, but that was certainly one that will stick in my mind forever. Just that whole week leading up to uh, the game and we knew it was going to be a sellout. Then we got onto the pitch and we knew that it was going to be delayed because the fans were still coming in and just looking around Highmarsh when we walked out and the buzz was, it was unbelievable. You'll never forget that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's just a, probably a, um, a real uh, massive, iconic part of South Australian football, if you want to call it that. You know, we have to look back to the time when, you know, Adelaide City um, pulled out of the um, National League mm -hmm. and then everyone thought that uh, there was going to be no more uh, national football in, in the state. And, you know, within a couple of weeks, Gordon and Gordon Pickard and Basil Scarcella and uh, Tony Ferrugia and Tony Henshaw, these people, uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, um, formed the club mm -hmm. and for it to happen so quickly, mm -hmm. that was what was, uh, was amazing. I can remember just um, from doing nothing, getting a call from Basil, meeting him at his house and then all of a sudden within weeks we're training and, <coughs> excuse me, and there was a, only a, you know, a few players there and we got everyone more or less from Adelaide City. It was, it was just a, basically a rollover mm -hmm. um, and then Cosy was uh, uh, appointed the coach and it just progressed from there. But that night at Highmarsh was um, something I'll never forget. Oh, I was there. It was, it was euphoric and it was unprecedented and, and I don't think anyone that was there will forget that at all. Now, Joe, yourself, um, again, uh, more accolades for yourself, playing with Adelaide City, 334 NSL games with them for 78 goals. Um, Adelaide, uh, you, you were Adelaide City Player of the Year, 86, 87, 88. That's pretty amazing to be able to follow it up three years in a row. Yeah, it was actually only two years in a row. 87, 88 was one season, but okay. and um, but they were they were certainly good days playing the old NSL. Um, there was a lot of good players in that in those days, and it um, yeah. uh, seems like forever ago now in some ways, but also it seems just like yesterday. Yesterday, and uh, very very good memories. And you, of course, you more so you you've done more coaching. Um, Obviously, with uh, your assistant to Adelaide City, you went over to Victoria, you were the under-16 state coach, you were with Green Gully when they won the Victorian Premier League uh, mm. Premiership, and then uh, came back here with Croydon Kings and then went on to be the state league or the state team coach, and yeah. now obviously landing this position. So you've got a lot of coaching uh, expertise behind you. Yeah, I was fortunate when I retired in, um, from Adelaide City, I went straight in to do our state league team there for, for one season before um, the, the John Perrin uh, gave me that job. And then I went in to help John this course for two years as the assistant at Adelaide City before uh, joining back up with Soren Matic, uh, my, old, my old coach, and helped him for a year before uh, I moved to Melbourne. Uh, in Melbourne, um, coaching the Victorian Premier League, it is a cutthroat league over there. Um, coached with Bulleen, the old Brunswick Juventus, for probably about just under four seasons. Had a year with the VSF, Victorian Soccer Federation, and looked after the state under-16 side, which was terrific. And uh, then I had a year with Green Gully, which was just a wonderful club, both on and off the field, and it was very successful. So uh, I've been fortunate with the, uh, with the type of clubs that I've been coaching. Croydon Kings here in uh, Adelaide when I came back. Um, worked with them for, uh, for a season and a half. 
uh, before taking up the state role that John Mundy at the Federation gave me uh, uh, 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. So I've been very lucky with the uh, clubs I've worked with and of course uh, getting that state job as well. And, and I think now I've got the, probably the best job. Uh, Never any doubt yeah, in my mind and yeah. I can tell you that.